the state of crypto. I want to thank everyone for having me. I'm usually the counter example. So I'm going to go through this because it's pretty fast. If you don't know me, I opened the first live cryptocurrency exchange 100 feet from the New York stock market on the ground floor uh, in 2013. There's a movie, Banking on Bitcoin. If you haven't watched it, it's pretty informative about how regulation screws up ecosystems. I opened the Miami uh, Blockchain Center. There's Mara Suarez. And I was a lot fatter back then. I lost 130 pounds. Come on, clap a little. I'm joking. Don't clap. Yeah, we opened the Blockchain Center in, uh, in Saudi a long time ago. So, we're talking about regulation. During, during the height of COVID, there was a UCC by the Universal Law Committee makes this universal commercial code that interstate commerce in the United States, each state, uh, uh, each state's legislature rubber stamps this thing, and then they adopt the rules that states have for interstate commerce. And in 2020, someone called me up and said, hey, they're saying that only institutions can have private keys in the latest UCC, Universal Commercial Code, update. So I hired a bunch of lobbyists, we were talking about lobbyists up here before, I hired a bunch of those, these lobbyists, and we got FaceTime, you know, with uh, the state legislatures and explained to them that, you know, I said, well, usually, uh, th this was in Texas, I said, the cattle, each cow is gonna have a private key, it's gonna be like a VIN number for the cow in the exchanges of the future, and uh, this universal commercial code update is gonna make you, uh, uh, make the banks own it, only. And the one state legislator jumped up and said, what'd you say? And then uh, over and over, state after state, and uh, uh, they wanted to make these learning uh, sessions. And then the Universal Law Committee from Boston, they pulled that out of the update. So that happened in 2020 during the height of COVID. They tried to sleep, slip that through. And as a matter of fact, Senator Elizabeth Warren is from Massachusetts. Now she has all those member banks with her. So the worst case scenario, I come up here and I give you the worst case scenario many times. So I believe that the mining companies now, most of the public mining companies are not really uh, need Bitcoin to be going up all the time or to save the Bitcoin. You know, the, only the private mining companies have to sell the Bitcoin to keep growing and pay their bills, but the public mining companies are getting all this money from the government, from uh, investors, and they're a little more lenient, and I think with this halving, the public mining companies are gonna buy a lot of the private mining companies, and uh, this uh, ETF is swallowing up all the Bitcoin, and that means you're probably not gonna have the alt season that we used to have in the past. So, I believe the worst case scenario is the institutionalized whitelisting of wallets and the public, which means, you know, and the whitelisting of the wallets and the public mining companies might not process your, pull your transaction out of the mempool because you might get a, all private wallets might become sanctioned. That's the worst case scenario, right? So people were talking about before, what would happen, you know, with institutionalization. I think that's our worst case scenario because the OFAC list is uh, out there. We're not on there yet. So the world's a bountiful place. Yes, I believe the world's a bountiful place. And I believe that through uh, printing of money, they've uh, stolen what should be rightfully ours. And if time was money, of course, every time they print money, they're stealing money. They're stealing time from you. Throw that in there. I think with uh, decentralization is a, a big thing that decentralized finance is a big thing and uh, algorithmic sta stable coins are incredible. As a matter of fact, Nikolai and Arun built MakerDAO in my apartment years ago and uh, that thing's running perfect. Uh, we run oracles. So, the reason I've been, uh, I'm in this business is because I'm a 
I believe I'm an activist more so than a businessman, especially lately. I'm an activist and I'm trying to empower people or explain to them that strength comes from within. And uh, the thing my father always says, Tirio de Guinness and Tirio de Tros, that's an ancient Greek saying that says, a beast you'll never become unless you eat beasts. So he told me that when I was a little kid every day. So we were talking about Africa before, and a friend of mine, Ray Youssef, who came to my meetups at Webster Hall, it was a nightclub, biggest nightclub in New York City that I, uh, I used to run when I was 26 years old. We, uh, I was one of the people who helped build it, and I ran it, whatever. But I had uh, Bitcoin meetups at this huge nightclub. And uh, I mean, we had Mick Jagger on the stage, Madonna, it was huge. And uh, I met Ray there years before I opened the Bitcoin Center. And, you know, I believe in Ray, and he has a peer-to-peer -peer platform that uh, is helping Africans in Pan-African trade. Uh, I think Africa, like uh, I think Nick said it earlier, is uh, somewhere where people should concentrate. And uh, Ray's been there for, I don't know, 13 years or something. And uh, Pan-African trade, inter-trade uh, within countries is very difficult. You can't send a wire from, uh, you know, Nigeria to Ghana without paying a third of the money or something. It's like if New York, you couldn't send the wire to New Jersey, what would happen? So his platform's helping people do that. It's more of a movement, and uh, that's why I'm helping him out. Many boots on the ground, of course. Go scoop that one. So I'm working on helping Joe, movie producer uh, Joe and Zach. And uh, so people have traded or sold credits to movies. So I thought it was a very good idea to put it maybe on the ordinal to have a reason to actually have an ordinal, which is uh, just you know blockchain proof of this of this uh, movie credit, and uh, it's working out pretty good. And uh, so we inscribe an ordinal, big volume, you know, an ordinals. So there's different, we made, I don't know, eight movies. We had uh, How the Gringo Stole Christmas with George Lopez, came out at Christmas time. And uh, there's a bunch of credits that you can buy that would be recorded on uh, the blockchain you know, as an ordinal. So I think that's a very good use. I don't really believe in artwork only, you know, who wants to buy a JPEG, even if it's original, I'm sorry. But if it has some kind of functionality that actually works, I believe in that, I believe in it. Yeah, uh, uh, Matt Movie Studios, the studio I'm involved with. These are a bunch of the pledge. These are different movies that have a, a few, uh, I don't know which ones are left. But you can put yourself, you know, get like executive producer, which that market existed for years, but the provability on the blockchain is much better because you don't have to exercise the ordinal, you can trade it. So you can buy it early, maybe they get a better star and then the price would go up probably because you could trade it later to someone who actually wants his name up in lights. I don't want my name on that system. in Washington. Oh. Uh, shot Citizen Wiener, that's a pretty good movie. This one's coming out, yeah, that's astrology and economics. And the spoils is how uh, Bitcoin paid uh, basketball player young ones from uh, Compton in Bitcoin. Uh, I forgot the name of his exchange. Uh oh. And many more to come, of course. Uh, yeah, pictures of pretty girls. Merchandising, all that. So I believe it's a great use of the blockchain. Uh, that's Bitcoin movie market. That's me. So I think that we have to look at this. I know that everyone wants a Lambo, right? And then, you know, I tell everyone, Oh, you're gonna get a Lambo? What if they don't let you drive? You know, we're at this precipice of humanity that for the first time, we're gonna actually have custody of our worth, right? Because if you put your custody, if you custody your work hours, 
and anything else across time, you know, it could be deflated. It could be inflated and be worth nothing. I mean, if it's in the three-dimensional world, it could be seized. It could be, all things can happen. So I believe in this because I see it as a movement. My mother was a very powerful woman. And one time, you know, I was on the playground. I always got beat up. When I was, we moved to a new school, I was the brownest person there. And uh, the principal said, oh, don't worry, they're just kids playing. And one day I beat up the bully and he wanted to throw me out of the school and put me on the short bus to the, you know, to the school without, for the challenge people. And my mother came to the school and threatened the principal. She said, she threatened, I'm not gonna say what you said, but she said, but she threatened the principal. I couldn't believe it, she threatened the principal. She goes, you are in the night. She goes, you have to have thados. So if you saw the slide before, thados is a Greek word. And as we're walking out, a Greek word that means your fortitude, your ability to move through uh, time affecting your environment and the people around you, your ability, your courage to move forward. They, they don't have that word in English because kings made English and they don't want you to have that word because that's your operating system, the words you use. So she told me, don't let anyone take your thoughts. And I'm telling you guys, don't let anyone take your thoughts. This technology is here, it's not for the institutions, but they'll copy it. You know, I, at one point I had 30% of the blockchain inventions and patents, I'm sorry. And uh, we'll see what happens down the road when they start using our inventions. But uh, I'm here for freedom, join me.